Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of the kitchen pantry remodel, the install. If you haven't seen part one, I would recommend clicking the link to that video in the top right corner. First things first, let's get all this stuff off the shelves. Then I could remove all the shelves. Our dog Ollie looks a little nervous at this point. After all, this is where we store all his food. Next, the adjustable track system that held the shelves up had to be removed, leaving plenty of holes in the sheetrock. And at this angle, you could really see how gross this cabinet was. Clearly the previous owner spilled something on the top shelf and did not clean it up. No worries though, because once I get these holes patched up, a fresh coat of paint would hide everything. Once the paint dried, I was able to mark out the height of the shelves. Now that I had my marks, I used my level to transfer the line across the entire back wall. This line would be used for a reference to where the bottom of the back support would be mounted. I chose to mark the bottom so that any pencil marks wouldn't be visible once everything was installed. I also used this time to mark where the stud was so that I could pre-drill the hole for the screw once I had the piece up on the wall, saving me from making measurements. Then I lined the back support up with that line and pre-drilled the first hole with a countersink drill bit. Once I had the first screw in, I made sure that the support was level. Then I could pre-drill and screw the two ends into the wall. This back support will give me something solid to anchor the side rails to. Now that the back support is mounted, I could measure the exact depth for the left and right side rails. Uh, I purposely left them long so that I could cut them to the correct length, knowing that they were likely going to be different lengths for each drawer. With the correct measurement, I used my miter saw to cut the side rails down to size. I also added two pocket holes to the end for easy mounting to the back support. I used a clamp to keep the rail flush with the back support and then a level to line up the front. Two screws will hold the rail to the front of the pantry and after squaring up the back, two Craig screws will hold the rail to the back support.
Then I just repeated the process for the right side rail. Now moving on to the drawer slides. I used two scrap pieces to span the bottom of the two side rails. This gave me a surface to place another scrap piece I used as a spacer for the drawer slides to sit at the correct height. I placed the drawer slide on top of the spacer and then spaced the slide back about three quarters of an inch from the face of the cabinet. This would account for the face plate of the drawer. Once I had the drawer slide all lined up, I used a self-centering drill bit to drill a pilot hole, followed up with a screw to hold the slide in place. I used four screws per slide to mount it to the side rail. Once again, I continued the process on the opposite side. I decided to use full extension soft closed drawer slides I found on Amazon for this project. Uh, they're a little more expensive than the standard drawer slides, but the soft close is worth it in my opinion. And more importantly, in my wife's opinion. Now that the drawer slides are mounted to the side rails, I could mount the slides to the drawer. I kept the two scrap pieces on the bottom from the previous step. Uh, this gave me a spot for the drawers to rest on and to keep the drawers even with the top of the side rails. Then all I had to do is pull the drawer out a few inches, pull the drawer slide out flush with the drawer face, and screw the slide to the drawer. I repeated the same thing on the opposite side of the drawer. After I had that done, I just pulled the drawer out a little bit further, making sure that the drawer was still flat on the two support pieces below, and then followed that up with another screw. And here's a nice shot of my arm.
And here's 30 seconds of me trying to line up the drawer slide just right so that I could put the last screw in. Once I had the screws in, I did a quick little test run of the drawer and was very disappointed with how hard it was to pull out and push back in. Luckily, there was a quick fix. I realized that I still had the two support pieces clamped to the bottom and the friction between them and the drawer was causing the issue. Once removed, the drawer opened and closed as it should. And the soft close feature worked great. One drawer down, three more to go. Once I had all three drawers finished up, I put them all back in and we started to use the pantry. A couple weeks passed and I finally had time to add the side shelves to each drawer, which meant I had to remove all the drawers to get enough access to work. The space between the side rails and the wall was going to be wasted space, so I decided to add a few shelves to better utilize all the space in the cabinet. Just checking to make sure the camera is videoing. Gotta love working in tight spaces. Because the walls were far from square, I decided to keep the shelves extra wide and then scribe the exact width on the board used for the shelf. With my marks, I could go back to the miter saw and cut all the shelves to the right length, followed by the bandsaw to rip the board to the correct width. Here's a lesson on what not to do with the bandsaw. After closer inspection, I realized I got pretty lucky. It just cut through the top of my fingernail and didn't even break skin. So, after my nerves calmed down a bit, I got back to work cutting the rest of the shelves to size, being much more cautious this time around. 
as you can see it was a perfect fit now just line it up and shoot a few brads into the side to hold it in place That was followed up with a small bottom brace which would help support any weight that I would put in these shelves. Which will consist mostly of our daughter Ryla's snacks, box noodles, and etc. So not very much weight at all. Once I had that screwed in, I shot a couple of brad nails from the top of the shelf into the bottom support piece. Then for the final time, I reinstalled the drawers. Overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Everything is much more accessible and things don't get pushed to the back, never to be seen again. I also like having these little side shelves. Um, they aren't the easiest to access, but utilize the space that would normally be wasted. I think that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and be sure to hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future.